speak these words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, this weekend I have run the broad spectrum of being a priest at the Cathedral of St. Philip. On Friday, I was in this space doing a funeral for a longtime member. On Saturday, I was doing the wedding, officiating the wedding for a young couple here at this place. And today, on Sunday, I'm here baptizing and preaching at this baptism service. By the end of the morning, I think I will have completed most of the Book of Common Prayer. And I'm going to put that in the check column. But in all seriousness, it just shows how amazing this place is and how much life and how much is going on in this parish and how important it is to so many different people. So as I was running around from a funeral to a wedding to a baptism and thinking about this gospel passage, the theme came to mind, the theme of change. Jesus is transfiguring. Jesus is changing. And as I ran to all those different events, I began to think about life. Life is about living with change. Living with change. So I want to ask you a question. How do you deal with change? How do you deal with good changes? How do you deal with bad changes? And I realize that this is an Episcopal congregation, so I'm going to refrain from any change jokes. How do you deal with change? I think we see in today's gospel passage, just changing, this transfiguring Jesus, I think we see in today's gospel passage that change involves two things. Change involves loss and love. Loss and love. And as I step back today and look at all that has happened in my life this weekend, I see loss and love amidst all those changes. Friday's funeral was for a parishioner that decided to change. A parishioner that decided he and his wife were going to leave Atlanta, retire down in South Georgia. And amidst those changes, as they were unpacking their boxes, he didn't feel so well and he went to the doctor and heard the news no one wants to hear. You have cancer. It's aggressive. And you do not have much time to live. Their family experienced the change that they weren't prepared to hear. Many of you know exactly what that is like. You have had family members in that same spot. And so as we gathered here on Friday, to celebrate his life, two themes were present. Loss, how much they missed him, and love, how grateful they were for all that he had done for them as a father, as a husband, as a friend, and as a colleague. And then yesterday, celebrating the wedding of a young couple in the cathedral. Weddings are about change. Their life was changing yesterday. And anybody who's been in a relationship knows exactly what that is like. How you're walking about your daily life, things are going well, and then suddenly someone enters it. And life is forever changed. Yesterday, we celebrated love. But with love also comes loss. Even in marriages, in relationships, with love also comes loss. If you've ever been to a bachelor party or a bachelorette party, don't worry, I will not share any stories. If you've ever been to one of those parties, you know that there's a lot of celebration. But if you start peeling the layers of the onion back, you'll see what's really happening is loss. The friends are excited for their friend, 
but they're also mourning that life will be different. That person has a new love. Their handicaps will go up. They won't be able to hunt as much. Now I'm going down a bad path. <laughs> it's about loss and love. And now we're gathered here this morning for these baptisms. And I know you families understand something about change because life has changed in your house. Whether it's a first child, a second child, or a third child, you are adjusting to the changes and trying to figure out the new normal. And anybody who's been a parent before, and some of these wise parents in the room have told me that parenting, that being a parent is about loss and love. You love this child so much. But as this child grows and as this child changes, you will have to let go. Change involves loss and love. And if we look at today's gospel passage, that is exactly what we see. What you notice in that first line is it, it says eight days earlier. What happened eight days earlier? Well, Jesus was in a conversation with his disciples. And they told him that he was the Messiah. And he said, yes, I am the Messiah. And here's what the Messiah must do. The Messiah must suffer death and then rise again. The Messiah must endure loss and love. And the disciples, particularly Peter, says, no, that can't happen. The Messiah is supposed to come in on a white horse and save the day. That can't be the case. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You have to change your understanding of the Messiah. What I am going to do involves loss and love. And so Jesus is transfiguring before them on this mountain today. They're all really excited because it confirms everything they thought the Messiah was supposed to be. And they say, let us build three monuments here. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Jesus says, no, I'm going toward Jerusalem. I'm going toward the cross. I'm going to the grave. It'll be about loss and love. So this morning, we baptize these children into that death and resurrection where Jesus has us focusing our attention. We baptize them into the death and resurrection of Christ. Life for them will change. They will be changed from glory into glory as that hymn says we will sing later today. And they will learn that the Christian life is about change. One of Dean Candler's favorite quotes is from Cardinal Newman. I hope I get this right. To live is to change and to live perfectly is to change often. It's stuck. To live is to change and to live perfectly is to change often. The Christian life is about changing, growing and changing. And with change comes loss and love. And we are to teach these children that through the changes and the chances of this life, if they find themselves in a place of loss, in a place of darkness, in a place of despair, that love is also present. Paul says nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even when we are at our worst and our darkest moments, nothing will be able to separate us from that love. Likewise, you parents should teach your children that as well, that nothing will be able to separate them from your love. It is our responsibility as a community to know that they believe that. 
Likewise, the changes and chances of this life may take them to a place where they experience great love. Whether it's love for another person, whether it's love for a career, a vocation, but we are called to let them know that even in a place of love, there is loss. That the Christian understanding of love looks like the cross. It is self-giving, self-sacrificing. That with love comes loss. But most importantly today, these children need to know that through the changes and the chances of this life, that God is Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with us whether we are on the mountaintops of life. God is with us whether we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God is with us. And we will baptize them. And they will be marked and sealed as Christ's own forever. Marked and sealed as Christ's own forever. No matter the changes. No matter the difficulty. No matter the loss no matter the love, they and we are all marked and sealed as Christ's own forever. Amen.